Hi everyone, it's Irish month. I was almost too late for that, having a few uh, issues with my back, having to take heavy medicines or no alcohol. Meanwhile, it's ending. Not that I'm completely cured, but you know what? It's, uh, it's still time to celebrate Ireland. Uh, uh, so, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, mind you, but this time we will be more in the Republic of Ireland. I covered a lot of Bushmills whiskey over the years, uh, uh, whiskies, but um, a few Jamesons as well, so that's why I'm not going to do a, a historical um, introduction about the Middleton Distillery. Uh, yes, we're going to speak about Powers, one of the brands of Middleton Distillery. Uh, you know, as for Scotland, uh, there's a lot of uh, brand names that comes from old distilleries, and it's the case with Powers, who was distilled uh, at the distillery called Powers by John Lane. Hence the whiskey we're going to talk uh, today about uh, until 2015 as i understand it it was still produced by the powers distillery now this with caution because uh, since 1973 as you might know irish distillers uh, went uh, under french ownership pernod ricard instead of english <laughs> yeah the revolt tree etc uh, so they are more uh, power, um, power, <laughs> more money to uh, to do production and to group things to uh, at a larger scale. I'm not going to go into that. If you want to know more about Jameson Distillery, uh, Middleton Distillery, see, uh, and the different brands, uh, go to see my Jameson um, whiskeys uh, review. Uh, still others to cover, but there's not no no recent, uh, no recent bottling, so that's why I, I hesitated to do this uh, yet again. Like Jim says, whiskey novice, hi. Uh, I still have to celebrate Irish uh, Month in my way, and it is in my way also because I'm gonna do uh, maybe a bit provocative comparison, but I'm thinking it hundred percent it's relevant at least flavor wise profile wise so stay tuned for some bottles you cannot see at the moment um, but it is in the title yeah there is some cognac connections for me with irish whiskey so we're gonna find out about this later on um i'm, I'm gonna do a slight parenthesis about that after I try this, which is the main reason I do this review, because from 2021, probably the the most recent bottle I ha bottling I have for any Irish distillery, mind you, except maybe some um, uh, refill, as I call it. Uh, uh, I mean, um, reserve bottle. I because I like to have Bushmills original uh, on on ice, yes, sorry, uh, on a regular basis. It's very refreshing, very clean, etc. Uh, but we're here to speak about powers, and we have two different kinds of powers there. Even if one has to change switch name, uh, because. This is called single pot steel. Yeah, I know this is, and the twelve has gone small. So this is for me not very reassuring. I will come back to that later on. Uh, while it was a bit more prominent, bit more prominent there, when it will when it was called special reserve, uh, this is not said to be. It's not even written anywhere. Ooh. First discovery. It's supposed to be a single pot steel. Uh, doesn't even say blended, so this is very weird. I think the regulations of Ireland Irish whiskies always amaze me how it is um, elusive and not really clear often. Even there, we know it's a blend. 
than the whiskey. Uh, the E doesn't pronounce differently, so it's Irish whiskey, even if it writes with K, uh, mind you. So what do we have here? Uh, we'll come back to it when we'll taste it, but Powers John Lane, 12 years old, my bottle is from 2021, is matured in first field bourbon, finished in Oloroso Oloro cask, and has its single pot still, triple distill, it also means this malted and unmalted barley. This is the difference, the main difference with Scotch whiskey, uh, mind you. So. Just to refresh things, even if my bottles are old, I know uh, we're gonna start with the gold label. Yeah, this is probably the shortest introduction <laughs> you've ever seen from from me in a while. Uh, and my pedestal is still there. I see it flourishes in other uh, YouTube channels too since a uh, long time ago I did that never mind um, as for other things uh, and yes why is there I don't have I'm, I'm sorry uh, an Irish whiskey's map I have a small one uh, Irish distilleries are big there's a big boom there as well as in France and other countries, England, etc. Japan. Uh, for the other Irish distilleries and all this topic, I will put links, forgot to say, below in the description to uh, several live shows I did that might be in, uh, interesting you if you haven't seen them yet. Of course, there's one about uh, this I did two or three i don't remember three but two with guests one with jim from the whiskey novice hi jim and one yeah you might know it uh about our rest in peace uh big al um alan so uh of from whiskey straight so if you haven't seen that at least not for me but for him uh have a watch please to remember his um, legacy as a reviewer, as a person, a uh, fantastic guy. I alas never met so um, Alan McVeigh, yeah, for those who don't know. So Powers Gold label, uh, Three Swallow is a kind of a uh, motto of the uh, distillery. The swallows, you can find them in many distilleries now. Uh, and yeah, triple distilled. What else can I say? Matured in first field bourbons, normally. Chill filtered and colored, of course, as almost everything on the table, I think, uh, with one exception, um, which is not Irish, once again. So this is the typical, not single pot still this time, but just, just as a reminder of uh, what is uh, 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 an Irish whiskey bourbon led this time from uh, Powers. And yeah, always forgot, apologies to not to use this branded glass, but it's a habit, I like its shape. So there we have it. Of course, the bottle is down, it's almost finished. I don't know if I will replace it, we'll see. Uh, the new Powers, by the way, this one is 40%. The new, even if I have seen some rebranded, rebranding is from a few years ago. Uh, it went from this to this. Uh, the rebranding made it for some bottlings, not all 43.2%, so it's a progress. This one is an old one from 2011. Oh, so the, we have our typical Irish notes. So already not exactly the same in the Powers 12, but so lo lots of vanilla, vanilla, sorry. Bit of a pricot, peaches. The slight mustiness that you often find in Irish whiskey. And now I wonder if there are not, not some ir um, sherry casks in there. It's supposed not, but I didn't find the old recipe. Um, yeah, some sweet spices. You have also some dry bot botanicals. 
varied okay let's go on the palette cheers Yeah, this the, the age and um, some OBE old bottle effect. Despite I did pump the air out of this, um, it's less brilliant than before. Uh, in the beginning, in the first half, it was quite fruity, quite powerful. Now it's uh, getting more um, down tuned, a bit toned down. If I may say, um, there's more green vegetal elements coming in. But I remember, I remember the profile, and so you did find some orange, apricot, peaches. Not gonna dilute it because it's gonna be worse. So there you have it, the single pot still, but way less powerful and less characteristic. It's just a reminder. Let's go now for this. That the, and again, it's the theme of the week. The cock broke. Um, despite I've checked it recently, uh, but you know I had to replace three, four, four spring banks. Only one out of the four was okay. But because it's a local barley uh, 16, I had to be, be I don't have backup <laughs> bottles of this too expensive now. I had to replace it just by caution for the future. So what is this? This has also changed uh, another time. There was another version and uh, I forgot the name. Apologies. This was the tube. So this fr from 2007, it's even older. Um, I forgot to speak about the price. Uh, yeah, because I don't have, yeah, sorry. Uh, th those were the, 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 the gold label was around 20, 25. This one was around 35, 40 euros back in the days. Um, so this one is matured in first, first fill bourbon cask, finished in Oloroso Sherry cask. Uh, it's also chill filtered and colored, uh, and it's called pure pot steel because it has some unmalted barley in it. This one is also the first that has a batch code, very easily um, identifiable, visible on the back label. So you see guaranteed John Power and Son, uh, Middleton Distillery. So even at that time, it, it's more likely it was produced at Middleton, uh, contrary to what I said. But uh, if you know more about me, that certainly those my Irish viewers will correct me about that. And again, apologies for not getting back to it. Uh, this video is mostly about flavors, not much about infos of uh, old infos distilleries as i like to do usually uh sorry about that uh okay what do we have here even with the 40 percent we have beat more sticky legs but not that much because it's i think heavily chill filtered so it's a golden color they forgot to speak about color problem of colors is uh, my screen your screen so anyway so golden color it's rich but there's this kind of mate thing that makes me think of the IE150A so that's why I don't want to speak too much about color when I have uh, an adult adulterated spirits in front of me Nose-wise, it also has lost some of its glory, but again, I did pump the air out, so uh, a few days ago, maybe not enough, but... Preservation, I owe you a, a video about preservation. I, I'm super late always about that, because I have uh, to put a lot of stuff on the table, and I forget. Yeah, so kind of the same as the other uh, again the 40 percent is really cruel uh, 43 would have been uh, at least uh, a better choice for me 
almost the same maybe more on the sherry side so more orange notes dried fruits let's go on the palette despite some obie it's more obviously irish on the palette with starting to show but still very shy Ah, not really. That's more Earl Grey with um, hmm. No, I don't really have the no typical note I want to speak to you about that we should have in the John's Lane, but this is very mellowed uh, over the years that doesn't have really very tiny not only of blackcurrant bud but also in some single pot stills i uh, red breast and others uh, there's this typical note i think it's very irish for me as well as the blackcurrant bud is that um, bit crushed uh, peanut note uh, so lots of arachid in french and different cashew note, cashew uh, nut, etc. I don't really have it here, only a hint of it in the background. I'm gonna try to open this one because it's less, uh, there's less OBE than in the other. And we're gonna go quick to the main reason of this uh, video that's to compare the Powers 12 with something else. yeah starts to wake up but there's too much vanilla um, but there's also something very irish for me in some ways it's just kind of silky almost um, yeah um just a minute it's always it's my mind uh sometimes thinks in English and sometimes um, yeah candle <laughs> candle wax uh, there's slight note of that there also we find this also in uh, of course in Kleinlich but we're not speaking about that here exactly So all in all, very nice, very delicate, very balanced, orange, peach, apricot, but it's very, very low in terms of power, especially now that it's less, a bit less than a half. Uh, even at the, the neck pour, mind you, was very beautiful. Uh, I already told you what I think of the neck pour question. Sometimes very relevant, sometimes absolutely not. I have several bottles that are we're better at neck pour than after any time. Um, yeah, okay, let's go for now. The probably I already spoke about it uh, as um, um, probably one of the best values of Irish whiskey now. Everything has been repackaged a few years ago. This is the tube. Uh, I need the tube. I like the guaranteed only pot still. I don't like the gray. For me, Irish whiskey means, I mean, Ireland, it's colorful. Maybe lots of green color, maybe contrast with some orange too. Uh, come on, come on. I mean, it's not pale as this. What does he say? Savor a drop of history. Oh, I don't need that. Uh, this is the ultimate expression of Irish whiskey celebration of original uh, pot still whiskey bottle that John Lane's Distillery Dublin matured for no less than 12 years, uh, 17, 1791 John Lane's Dublin Distillery. So you see a bit of a historical thing. Uh, but still, it doesn't say anywhere non filtered non-colored. And like I said, what I don't like is the very discreet 12 years old that suggests that someday maybe 
it's gonna lose its age statement. You will remember this if it's true, otherwise you can have fun of me. Oh, what's this? Uh, anyway, so this is batch, uh, as you can see, L11111312867, but told at uh, 11 uh, and 19, 11 hour and 19 minutes. Uh, doesn't say either. Oh, so, oh, sorry, it says non-chill filtered. I have a doubt about that. It says non-chill filtered. At least, voila. A nice cork as well. Hope it won't break uh, easily, but you know, it's like a bit like Aaron Battle's cork uh, rebranded. I'm not very confident. It's going to be a very solid one. Anyway, what do I have here in the glass? more sticky legs beautiful legs i don't know if you see them uh, i'm not a photographer i'm just taking pictures uh, of my whiskies uh, but uh, someday i would like to see someone do a complete book about only legs of whiskey in a glass it's so beautiful Gosh, it, it won't focus anyway let's compare this nose to something i will tell you after what it is i know it's not a rum it's a rum glass but oh there's a difference there's a difference should have poured also another glass um yeah wait a minute i'll be back all right i'm back with this powers 12 years old single but still john's lanes tribute bottling if i may say so again this vanilla driven uh this um yeah it's a bourbon there's a majority most probably there on the nose it's uh first field bourbon it's how it comes across is this indication of uh, uh some candied fruit some uh uh, orange, uh, etc., but it remains balanced with the bourbon cask on the nose. This has evolved a lot. It's the first time I tried for a few months, so we'll see. Uh, it's a bit closed at the moment, don't know why. Uh, so we'll take my notes for the nose. So, orange, peach. Some caramels as well, some spices, some oak, maybe some cloves, and some musty oak. You see again, right? So, nose is a bit closed. We're gonna go to the palate. Cheers. Mm. Hmm. Ah. Surprisingly, it's not a good bottle for the comparison. Okay, I apologize. The black currant bud note, which I found very typical Irish and especially single pot still, is very subdued there. Uh, tell the truth, I had it more in the red breast, which I might have talked about uh, in a video, but probably not in a single video, not sure. Uh, then what I thought that the comparison will be a bit perilous, but um, well, let's say it's a general comparison about single pot steel. Well, you understand my point after that. So this something very melted at the neck pour. It was more speaking like what I thought it would, <laughs> but it's getting. Mm, yeah, there's batch variations also. You know, I bought this based on uh, one try and, and also on Jim with Kinavis praise about this and other YouTubers and other reviewers. But to be honest, for now I still struggle with it to find it as good as I expected it 
I haven't even finalized the uh, numbers for the rating, but it's not getting very high. So either it's still closed despite this level, or it's not going to be a great batch, which is disappointing regarding the price, which was 66 uh, euros. So it's not uh, very satisfying. But we'll see how it evolves. There's something beautiful, but it's restrained immediately after. I don't understand why. Because it's 46%. I'm going to put some water, and I'm afraid the winners of this session are not going to be, sorry guys, the Irish. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm, I haven't followed a lot the rugby tournament. I know I'm not biased. That's a bit better. The orange peach apricot combo that you find normally in a lot of Irish whiskies of this of this kind are a bit. Uh, overtaken by some kind of slightly tannic oak uh, lots of ginger and different pepper spices and there's something that's prevent this to be better than say something 86 87 max so i'm a bit disappointed today but i had a reservation on the opening as well when I opened it. So let's explain now why there is why there is a French whiskey map. Uh, it's whiskey, it could have been something else, but uh, a map I already talked to you about. And I'm going to use very soon to do a, tr uh, a tribute to French spirits because I'm going to participate to uh, the uh, Journée des Spiritueux Français day of uh, the french spirits which is something that have been um, uh, founded a few years ago by two uh, let's say influencers reviewers something different but uh, on instagram and other platforms but france because as i told you on the title i think there are connections between something that should not be uh, compared, but I have to, nevertheless. And to make you understand this even more, when I did my highlights of the year 2023 video, there was a bottle that for me was the best in some category, but symbolically and a bit provocatively for me, it was the best Irish whiskey. I like profile i ever tasted in my life in 25 years but it's not an irish whiskey it's not even a whiskey it's my winner of the year cognac wise it's a cognac of the region fin bois area from gros perrin it's a collector's cognac it's numbered 5222 heritage collection bottled at um, 46.5 I think this had the most beautiful and not only black current bud note I ever tried uh, even more than a, a red breast 25 cast strength for friends I still have a sample to cover so yeah the Gros Perrin uh, cognacs have a lot of uh, some, not all, some of their cognacs have a very heavy single pot steel sherry profile. But it is also a characteristic you can find in other cognacs. Not all, mind you, but you can find them in Grand Champagne region and in Finbois. For instance, but also sometimes borderies. I'm not gonna go deep into cognac now. I did a preview, kind of preview episode a while ago I, because I'm preparing a cognac 
and an Armagnac episode. But I'm gonna start first by the lower ABV 40%, unfortunately, with this Ragno Sabourin number 25 XO, but it's in fact uh, between 15 and 25 years old, if I remember well. A uh, super heavy bottle, hope it won't fall. <laughs> uh, Ragno Sabourin is a family owned company. And finally, we get an Irish glass, <laughs> which is something that's not Irish, apologies. But I wanted to something to concentrate more the flavors because it's only 40%. So I'm going to compare, if I may say, the single pot still Irish whiskey, not necessarily the ones on the table, a bit disappointing today, but some of the best I had, uh, I think of a, uh, what was it? yellow spot i think yeah yellow spot yeah i forgot to say middleton has the jameson range the powers range they have uh, middleton very rare range and they have the spots the uh, colors range so green yellow red blue uh gold and i think someday we're gonna see a white too so there you have it, the black current bud at the almost at the max, except for the ABV. And that's slightly, it's the difference between cognac and single pot steel and whiskey. It's that kind of solventy, not really acetone, but some would say nail polish remover, but not exactly like that. Or it's a brand question, I don't know, in France. And immediately there's a fresh orange juice. This apricot, dried apricot as well as fresh one. Here's this less peach than in another one we're gonna see. Let's go uh, Santé on the palate. Wow. Too bad the ABV is too low because it's fantastic. Very refined, very melted, very um, balanced. Even if there's, there's some green elements, um, some green oak, maybe almost. First time I noticed that, I didn't notice it for the five, four first pours. very interesting um, it's something a bit different also this tasting it's very weird um, I haven't double checked my palate before to be honest but I'm surprised anyway you know that if you love whiskey every tasting is different more or less but different Today comes across a bit green. Usually it's it's more um, fruity, less acidulous and less bit bitter. Okay, now we're gonna go to the real deal, if I may say, about what I was saying. So this one is Valentin Signier. It's 13 years old uh, only this time, but it's 46% and there's no, it's not written, but I went to visit there. So I will put also a link to my visit to two domains of Cognac. This one is a producer and Gros Perrin I showed you before. Gros Perrin is a um, collector. Uh, it's also family owned, both are family owned, but it's an indie butler, but in cognac, you cannot really compare indie bottling uh, whiskey butlers with indie bottling cognac, as uh, there are over 500 producers producing for big companies. Uh, and also they have their own, they collect a lot of cask, make them mature more uh, in their uh, own warehouses, but also do a remarkable, often, not always, but remarkable blending work in there. And I see, I saw that because I visited. 
um, and I saw also the, the influence of caramel we tried uh, IE150 I mean and chill filtering all that very interesting visit without sounding immodest because Gros Jean Gros Perrin said it himself to me it's one of the most interesting and was the most comprehensive um, topic written about cognac uh, by someone who's not in cognac uh, he said about what I wrote about my uh, journey to cognac land if I may say uh, Voyage au pays du cognac uh, it's in French but it's also translated and there's, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 tasting notes of cognac, but also a surprise at the end, almost very end, which you will like, I'm sure, you whiskey lovers. Just saying. Link in description. Now, how about this Odyssey 2000 Fambois? I wish I had a case of this because it's fantastic cognac. So there you have it, sticky legs. Uh, it's yeah, it's gold, but brilliant gold. There's no E one fifty A there, and this is very Irish for me. Single pot steel. It's one of the cleanest, the most balanced, the most beautiful nose uh, I had in cognac. Of course, I tried older vintages last year. You have my report on Instagram of older Valentin Signé from the 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. Uh, this kind of quintessential floral slash fruity profile of some cognac provide. It's not only those notes, mind you. Let's compare it. Wow, no, this one hasn't lost anything. Oh. You get floral, you get, um, it's very subtle. Uh, it's kind of chirurgical, if I may say, uh, fruity and floral notes. It's very precise and at the same time, there's a balance between everything and there's a refinement you don't have in many cognacs and whiskies orange peach apricot uh, gentle oak gentle spice um, very tiny uh, ester pr uh, notes uh, so exotic pear pe etc uh, pineapple etc and then finish and retro olfaction when you have swallowed and it comes back from the nose and the palate this blackcurrant bud note I, I really love don't know about you guys tell me in the comments do you find this blackcurrant bud note in your single pot steel whiskies usually which one of your irish whiskies provides the most of this blackcurrant note maybe a red breast cast ring maybe um, something else haven't had the opportunity to try the blue spot for instance but i don't know maybe um had still some samples of red breast uh, rare stuff to try yeah so if you like my conclusion if you love irish whiskey continue to buy irish whiskey but have a look have a taste of some cognacs, especially the one from Indies at 46% or more, you will find something that's quite similar, though once again it's distilled, um, it's wine, white wine distilled as Armagnac, white or red? Uh, Armagnac is white for sure, uh, for cognac I have a doubt now, but it's distilled grape, distilled wine, so why it's so similar to um and it's double distilled why it's so similar to irish whiskey in a way i don't know it's a kind of mystery between maybe the unmalted barley notes that resonate with sherry and transformed it to something close to cognac i don't know uh i don't have a scientific background chemical especially 
only people like um, Romboot, Iladi, Whiskey Nerd, or people like that could answer to this. Uh, and of course, professional people. But uh, there you have it. Hope it was interesting for you. See you next time for something special and related to France, also, I'm afraid, or not. Bye bye. Au revoir. <laughs>